This is K2 News at 5 on your side. Today is primary election day in the state of Washington, and voters have just three hours left to get your ballots in. The presidential primary already happened back in March, so today people are voting for things like Congress and governor. Ballots need to be postmarked or dropped in a ballot box by 8 o'clock tonight. Good evening, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Steve Dunn. And I'm Deborah Knapp. So far, less than 22% of eligible voters in Clark County have turned in their ballots. Of course, with the mail-in system, we do expect that number to go up. K2 Shelby Slaughter is live at a ballot drop box in Clark County now. And Shelby, you spoke with the Clark County Auditor today. What are they saying about election security in our current political climate? A lot of people want to see elections today, and when I spoke with the Clark County Auditor, he says if we want to get those most accurate results, we need to give them time to do their jobs. Now, ballot boxes are open for another three more hours. They close right at 8. If you're worried about getting to one, I'm told there's 22 across the county, but you must be in line to drop off your ballot by 8. We were able to watch as people already got to work counting the ballots that have been dropped off. Clark County Auditor Greg Kimsey tells me already this turnout is looking very similar to 2022. We received 26,000 ballots today uh, and we'll probably receive another 24,000 ballots by the end of the day today. So for about 50,000 ballots a day and we think uh, after we get those ballots today and then tomorrow we'll be right at about almost 45 percent turnout. One important step that has to be done, especially with these ballot drop-offs, is verifying the signatures of these ballots. Kimsey says the goal is to have 99% of the counting done by Friday. And of course, if you do need a list of where those ballot drop-off boxes are, we have a list up right now on our website. We're going to be following this election very closely and bring you the latest both on air and online. Reporting live in Vancouver, I'm Shelby Slaughter. Shelby, thank you. Now, K2 political analyst Jim Moore is live in the studio with us of a preview of the Washington primary. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Okay, let's start about uh, Congressional District 3. Mm -hmm. It looks to be another rematch between Marie Glusenkamp Perez, of course, the incumbent, the Democrat, against Joe Kent, who's a Republican. But there are two other people in the race. What are we expecting from voters tonight? Well, really f expecting for them to go for the top two. Um, and it's not just based on policies and things like that. It's the amount of money that people have spent. It's the advertising that you've seen on television, radio, and your, your social media feed. It's the outreach of the candidate. So it really looks like Gleason Camp Perez and Kent are really going to go through. Well, you mentioned that Washington uses what they call the top two. Top two vote getters go on to November. What happens, Jim, if the top two are from the same party? They go through. There's a, that's just between the top two from the same party. It's happened several times in Washington. California has the same system. California, you sometimes get statewide offices where Democrats are facing off against each other. So it, it happens. This is kind of a follow-up to that. In the governor's race, Jay Inslee, of course, not running again. So you have fresh slate for all these candidates. There's a lot of them. What do you expect? <laughs> Here I expect th there's basically just four of them that have raised significant money and two of them have run true statewide campaigns. So I expect Dave Reichert, the Republican, and Bob Ferguson, the Democrat, to be the ones that win simply based on looking at their campaigns across the entire state. And we'll be having a program later on tonight. We'll be talking about all of this. You'll be with us, Jim. I'll be with you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jim. K2 is on your side, tracking the latest results from the Washington primary as they come in. Join us for a special digital edition, as Steve just mentioned, at 8 o'clock for live coverage. You can watch it on our website, katu.com, and our YouTube page. To national politics now, and the big news today, Vice President Kamala Harris has chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate in the 2024 election. Within the last two and a half hours, they had their first campaign rally together in Philadelphia. Sources familiar with the decision tell ABC News that Harris was drawn to Waltz's Midwestern roots, his executive experience as governor, and his background as a former teacher and longtime member of the Army National Guard. Here's what Harris had to say at the rally this afternoon. Tim Waltz and I, we agree about many things, including when our middle class is strong, America is strong. And strengthening the middle class will be my defining goal as I am President of the United States. Uh, tomorrow, Harris and Waltz will campaign together in Wisconsin and Michigan. The Trump campaign is calling Waltz, quote, dangerously liberal. 
The Democratic National Convention starts August 19th in Chicago. President Biden is expected to be the keynote speaker on the first night. The next night, former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama will speak. Tim Walz will speak on the convention Wednesday night. Harris will cap off the convention Thursday night once she's formally named the Democratic candidate. ABC will offer nightly coverage of the DNC speeches and the events, and K2 will bring you reports from local delegates, just as we did during the Republican National Convention.